why? Why does anyone attempt suicide? Why do people who have every single thing that they need and almost everything they want have suicidal thoughts? Why do people that have everything to live for compared to most people end up becoming suicidal and taking suicidal action? Why? Why do people like this attempt suicide? Why does this happen? What is going on in their heads? What is it? What goes wrong with someone that has so many gifts, talents, privileges, advantages? Someone with all the luck. What is it? Why? My name is Francesco Belafonte. Welcome to Frank Talk About Suicide, Episode 7. It was just several days, maybe a week, after I was home from the hospital after nearly dying by suicide that one of my closest friends from college visited me at my parents' home where I was staying. We were sitting on the couch in the family room and he asked me a question, do you know why? Do you know why you did it? I can see him asking the question and I looked at him like, thinking, of course I know. My response to Fernoli was, well sure, clearly I wasn't thinking straight, but I do remember what happened and I do remember what my thinking was, as irrational as it may have been. So I explained to him the story. I got tripped up in a new business area on a project up in Canada. He and my four other closest friends that lived in New York, who were my sounding boards, all moved away. I began to question everything. I began to doubt the one thing that I had always counted on, which was you know, the organ between my ears, my brain. I had had all sorts of self-esteem issues growing up with a weight issue, but I'd never had any issues or questions about my ability to get after something intellectually, to go after a problem and solve it. Academically, I had excelled, and I had excelled at work. I was the youngest titled staff out of 350 in the Wall Street office of a finance IT consultancy, and I had gotten tripped up. I isolated myself. I was ashamed for not understanding. I was ashamed for thinking suicidal thoughts. I was ashamed that I was feeling the way I was feeling. I was ashamed that I couldn't deal with this problem myself. And I was afraid to admit to people that I was having this problem. My life was going down a path that I didn't want it to go down. It was going down a path that was unacceptable. The voice in my head, the things that I said to myself over a very short period of time completely changed. So whereas I would have explained to him that this story about my confidence being shaken by this, by this bad experience at work led me to question everything about myself. The more I think about it, 18 years on, the number of stories that I could tell that I think fit into why I almost killed myself has gotten me to the point where there's no way for me to know and it's clear that any answer I give, any story that I tell, there's something to a story that you're telling being absolutely true and at the same time absolutely confabulatory, subjective. The stories are subjective by nature. We have a point of view and we're sharing it. The story that I have to tell or the stories that I have to tell about this experience are, are just that. They're certainly made up after the fact and they are good faith connections of facts behind me. So it's true, the story I have to tell about being tripped up at work and questioning everything. But I'm someone, unlike most people, who attempt suicide and die by suicide have some trauma. I did not have this trauma. And I think it's important for people to get that you do not need to have trauma in your past to become suicidally depressed or to become suicidal, to have suicidal thoughts or to take suicidal action. It does not take trauma. That's important. I am intimately aware. I am an expert. I'm a lived experience expert. I don't love the term lived experience, but that's the one people use. I'm a lived experience expert when it comes to non-traumatic life experience leading to a suicide attempt or to suicidal behavior. So so I know there are thousands, tens of thousands of people who have lost loved ones, friends, colleagues, associates, relatives to suicide and they are not aware of any trauma in their loved one or associates life. And it's my hope that both for these people, survivors of suicide loss, whose loved ones did not have trauma, that they may be able to glean some insight, get some insight into what was going on uh, with the person that they lost so that they can have some understanding and maybe have more peace around it. And secondly, obviously, those that might be going down this path that don't have trauma in their life, it is my hope that people like that find me and can hear about my experience with these extreme states of consciousness that lead to self-destructive thoughts so that they can avoid them because I had one subsequent depression to my suicidal near-death experience, but I've never been suicidal since that. 
and I credit the things that I have learned. I credit my growth, personal growth and development with giving me the safeguards that I no longer go there. I watched a Survivor's Day event online put together by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention last year. And a theme which befuddled me a bit was listening to survivors of suicide loss speak almost definitively about the utter mystery of why. The utter mystery around why did their loved one die by suicide. How can someone that you love so much and that you believe loves you so much be in so much pain, be suffering so much that they would not even mention to you that they are considering not living anymore? How can this happen? How can they even think of hurting themselves? How? Why? What is there on this earth that could move someone to do this? How does this happen? Why does this happen? How did this happen to my son? What did I do? What could I have done? I have these answers. They're my answers. You, as a loved one who has lost someone by suicide, it will occur to you that I am your son, your brother, your father, your sister, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your coworker, your best friend, your lover, your shoe salesman, your gardener, your you name it. If you think that what I think is probably what your fill in the blank thought, that's for you to say. There is a rising movement of voices like mine. If you have lost someone, or if you are struggling with self-destructive thoughts and behavior, there is someone like you out there who has thought the same things you've thought, more or less, I am claiming. I'm not claiming that I am for you. I'm not claiming that I am your lost one. I don't have all of the answers. I have come up with answers for me. I've spent about 18 years doing it, and I am now ready to to start to give this back to people. Why you should listen to me is because what I have to say may be of value to you. You will make that call. It will occur to you that what I'm saying resonates with you as your loved one or with yourself. If it does, I would say to listen to that, to listen to those thoughts as they occur to you because you never know when you're going to get a piece of information that changes your life. So the story that I told Fernoli is true. Is it why? It's a story. It's stepping back and after the fact description of what happened and why what happened happened. Things happen and then people say things about them. They're never the same thing, right? They can't be. There are events and things in the world and then there are stories about them. What I recently told my father and recorded as I was telling him over the phone was also true. A lot of my suicidal crisis was me believing that I was not going to be able to live up to what my number one hero in my life did. I was not gonna be able to live up to, not the expectations that my hero had for me, but live up to my expectations for myself because I was lucky enough to have a father who is my hero. This man who, when he was 14 years old, was making 400 bucks a month in today's dollars, this guy threw down the gauntlet. He didn't have Jack. And he and my mom gave me everything. And I saw myself not delivering on that. That was the truth. It is also true, as ridiculous as it sounds, that I was suicidal and eventually took suicidal actions in part because I didn't have the guts to admit that I wanted to live the life that Matt Damon was living. That is also the truth. So make no mistake, people like me, people that have everything, certainly everything that I needed, and essentially everything that I wanted, or at least that I admitted that I wanted. These are all the reasons that someone that doesn't have trauma in their life, that isn't suffering from reverberations of a horrible event that has left its mark up here. I am someone who was gripped by fear about life. Why? Oh. Part of me wants to say, you know, I'm writing a book about it, and part of me wants to say, I have no idea, but I can tell you a bunch of stories. At the end of the day, no matter what your answer is as to why you do something, you don't necessarily even know. What Fernoli said, his question is, was a great one, do you know why? My answer to Fernoli's question now, why, it's so I could do this.